This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to help you build an awesome website to help run your business. In this video, we're gonna be showing you seven different recycling techniques, ranging from our most basic low budget method all the way through to our larger production methods that can help turn recycling into a viable business. So to kick things off, we're going as simple as possible with a heat gun and a tin can. Once you finish your tin of beans for lunch, give it a rinse and you're pretty much good to go. The beauty of this method is that you don't need to shred the plastic first, you can pop the lid straight into the tin and add some heat. Surprisingly enough, that heat gun does get pretty hot, so keep your eye on the plastic and then remove the heat once it's melted. We're pushing the plastic down into the tin after each layer is melted before adding more and continuing. It will take a little bit of time to completely fill the mould, so just keep repeating the process until you're at the volume that you want. And once the tin was full, we inserted a wooden handle with some notches cut into the end of it to help the plastic grab on as it cools down. And then we added some scrap wood and clamps to help add some pressure to the mould as it cools completely. So after you peel away that tin completely, what's left is a pretty dense and heavyweight mallet. And while it would work perfectly like this, we did chuck it onto our lathe just to reveal those nice black and green marbled patterns. But if a mallet isn't for you, you could always channel your inner baker and crack out your cookie cutters. For this one, we're using our panini press, but instead of using our regular Teflon baking sheets, we're actually gonna test out these silicon sheets. These are perfectly smooth on both sides, which means the finish of the plastic comes out great, and then there's no need for finishing. Once our blue and white plastic is melted, we twist it, fold it, and then flatten it one more time into a bigger, flatter sheet. Then, while it's still hot, we take our cookie cutters and then push them into the soft plastic. The cutters won't cut all the way through the plastic and you do want to take care not to damage the silicone sheet underneath. What's left is a paper thin bit of plastic that you can run a sharp knife around and then pop your shapes out. With just a little bit of tidying up, this is actually a really good way of making quite complex shapes without having to pay for expensive moulds. We strung up the anchor as a pendant, but these would work great for key rings or Christmas decorations. So what was if you wanted to make larger items, but still wanted to keep it very much DIY? Ho <laughs> ho! Then you can use our next method, DIY wooden moulds. The great thing about wooden moulds is that you can make them out of scrap wood that you might already have lying around. The one thing you want to make sure is that you build them strong enough to withstand the forces of the plastic as it cools down. One way to do this is by cutting the shape and a plug out of a flat sheet of material. Usually we also use a little bit of spray varnish and that helps the hot plastic from sticking to that material. Essentially, you could heat the plastic in any way that you want for this. You could use the tin can trick that we showed you earlier. You could pop it in the oven on a really low heat, but the most efficient way that we found is the panini press. Once you've got enough plastic up to temperature, you could pop it in the mold and then add some pressure. We made this bottle jack press, which is great for this, but you could also use some heavy weights or some clamps to do the same thing.
You do tend to get a bit more flashy with this method, which you need to remove, but after some trimming and shaping, we've made a super strong table saw push stick. We also used this method on our recent beach bat project, which was made entirely from plastic that we collected from the beach. The beauty of this method is that you don't need to spend a load of money on a mould in order to make some fairly tricky shapes. Plus, if anything goes wrong, you can easily fix or remake the mould yourself. But what happens if you wanted to make larger sheets? Then you'll probably want to build your own sheet mould. When making our own wooden moulds in this way, we like to use thick plywood and layer up multiple pieces using glue and screws. Overlapping the corners also helps to add loads of strength. We built this exact mould about two years ago, and it's still going strong. For larger volumes, the most efficient way we've found is to tag team the panini press with a little toaster oven, and that way you can get through a load of plastic. The press can melt the plastic really quickly, and then you can chuck that into a bigger tray in the oven, which will maintain the temperature. The bottle jack press is perfect for this type of project as it can get lots of force down really quickly and really evenly. This sheet was around 12mm thick and about 300mm square. We used our thicknesser to tidy up the surface, and then eventually this became a stool top. Ever since we made this mould specifically, we've used it on loads of different projects, and it even comes into our next plastic recycling method as well. But before we show you the rest of our plastic making methods, we want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace are officially our longest running sponsor, and the key reason for this is that we absolutely love their product. We need a website that's capable of doing a load of different things. It needs to be super visual to make our content look as good as possible, but it also needs to be informative so that we can include all the details on how to recycle at home. On top of that, we also need a website that can give us a storefront that we can sell products or merchandise from. Not only does Squarespace tick all of these boxes, but it's also super friendly so anyone can use it, even us. Starting up a website can be super daunting, so for a one-stop shop that will do everything you need, we cannot recommend Squarespace enough. If you don't have to take our word for it, check it out and decide for yourself with a free trial at squarespace.com. And once you're ready to go live, head to squarespace.com forward slash brothers make for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Right, back to the plastic. So let's say you've made some recycled plastic sheets, but you want to cut some more complex things from them. You can of course hand cut these, but if you're thinking of making two or more, then a good option to consider is a CNC router. We are the very proud owners of the Stepcraft D840 CNC milling machine, which now has its very own enclosure. The router can cut any shape that you can draw by using a cutting tool spinning at high speed. This is actually the second version of the machine you may have seen us use in previous videos, and my word, it's such a cool piece of kit. Using this smaller offcut of a larger sheet we used for a different project, we were just about able to squeeze two of our chosen shapes in. And since we simply copy and pasted this on our design software, we know the machine will cut these exactly the same. This kind of machine would be absolutely perfect if you want to make items to sell and you're going to run small batches of the same product at once. And the enclosure is a game changer for us, as it means that we can collect all of the plastic to reuse again in future projects. We left a really thin layer of plastic to cut through, which we trimmed off and then added a small round over to both sides. This little product is a page holder for all of you one-handed multitasking readers out there. Cute, right?
So we've shown you how to make wooden moulds, we've shown you how to CNC stuff, but if you want to take this to the next level and turn your love of recycling into a business, then a great option for you is injection moulding. Injection moulding machines allow you to inject plastic directly into a mould, which allows you to make products at a much quicker rate. Just think of it as like a high-tech version of the push stick and beach bat technique that we showed you earlier. But in order to cope with the much higher pressures involved, you'll need to upgrade the wooden moulds to metal ones. And while you can buy these moulds pre-made, we've just got a brand new machine in the workshop that means we can make them ourselves. So I'm very proud to introduce our Wazer water jet cutter. This very cool machine mixes a high pressure jet of water with an abrasive, which means it can cut up to 12 millimeters thick aluminium or six millimeters in steel. A bit like a laser cutter, but with water. Get it? Laser. It can also cut HDP as well, so we could use it to cut profiles like we did with the CNC. In order to make a metal mold, you of course need some stock metal to cut. But since we're all about recycling, we had a little scout around and we managed to find this 10 millimeter aluminium plate with some old pumps and circuits attached to it. Fortunately, there was a section that was large enough that we could use without any holes, so we cut this free with an angle grinder and then mounted it on the Wazer. We used our Vectric Aspire CAD software to draw the shape of the mold plate and then transferred this over to the Wazer CAM package. For this fairly chunky bit of aluminium, the cut took around two hours. Once it was done, we rinsed off all of that abrasive and then took it out of the machine. There are a few little tabs to cut and some spots to clean up using our rotary tool, but once we'd done that, the mold was ready to put to work. Now that we've got our mold ready to go, it's time to fire up the injection molding machine to make sure it works. This time we're using shredded plastic and we pop it in the machine and let it sit for eight to 10 minutes while it melts. Once it's ready, we clamp the mold in place and then pull that wheel to force the hot plastic into the mold. And now that we have this mold, we have a way of making these book holders in a small batches at a much faster pace. Having machines such as the CNC and the Wazer are perfect for us as a small business. We can use these to make prototype products for people as well as our own custom molds for other businesses. So far, we've showed you a bunch of techniques to make relatively small products out of recycled plastic. But since there's still 300 million tons of plastic being produced every single year, we thought we'd show you a technique that uses up a lot more plastic. This is our extrusion machine. And whilst it's one of the smallest of its type, this is designed to pump out a continuous stream of molten plastic. Think of it a bit like a large scale 3D printing nozzle. While our injection moulders have a limited volume that they can inject in a single shot, our extrusion machine can fill much bigger moulds. Moulds for this machine can be made pretty inexpensively. It's standard box section steel with a plate welded on one end. Essentially, this machine can make the raw materials needed to make larger items like furniture. This 30 kilogram bench was made from about 10,000 face masks that were sterilized and then turned into pellets. And another great thing about this material is that it doesn't have any natural grain or defects such as knots like wood might do, so you can simply bolt and screw it all together. So there you go, a bunch of different ways for you to make products out of recycled plastic, ranging from some nice and easy DIY methods all the way through to others that could be used to set up a small business just like we have. A couple of thank yous before we sign off. Firstly, to you. If you're still watching at this point, then you're a bloody legend. Thank you very much. And of course we have to thank those 
wonderfully delicious members. <laughs> so creepy. Nice. Can you never say delicious member? In the same <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have to thank those <laughs> legends. <laughs> Over on Patreon, thank you so much guys, it's you that keep the workshop lights on. If you want to join the crew, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash brothers make. We have different support levels available from one pound a month, so <laughs> have a look. <laughs> have a look. Right, should we call it there? Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one, happy Christmas! Bye, happy Christmas! A Merry Christmas. Oh, you had a Christmas jumper. You want to show them? I do have a Christmas jumper. Look. There you go. Look, Christmas. I was really annoyed that it cut it off. Uh, have a Christmas.